I won't take long. I might name my firstborn son, Clive. Alex Dron, 
says, while you partied with your icon friends, Clive studied the blade. Yeah, he did. Clive likes to fight and he is very good at fighting. Every time I see him fight, I'll be like, you are. You are very sexy with the blade. I'm just a voice, but yeah, you are. You're very good. August, the voice acting reminds me of FF12, which is awesome. I think so too. There's that classical sense, isn't there? There's this um, real sense of epicness. And I, I thank you, August, because Final Fantasy XII, I think, has some of the most amazing voice acting <laughs> in Final Fantasy, but also just in general. Is it Heyu Nguyen? Crystal, check. Spiky hair, check. Pretty boys, check. Chocobos, check. Big ass monsters, check. Fucking royal issues, check. That's impossible, check. Yeah, correct, you've got all those. And but unfortunately, that's all there is in the game. It's just those few things, there's, there's nothing else. It's a very shallow game. Mark Horgan says, are we really having a Final Fantasy character called Clive? Yes, you are, deal with it. As Michael Jordan's mother once said, a shoe is just a shoe until my son steps in it. And I'm gonna tell you, a Clive is just a Clive until Clive steps in it. British voice actors, count me in. If it wasn't British voice actors, I wouldn't be here. So I thank you, Square Enix, for making this British voice actor so I get to live out my dream of playing a Final Fantasy protagonist. So thank you. Finchy, <laughs> Finchy from the office will be an invaluable companion on, his, on this journey uh, with his limit break. Frey Bentos, he hurls the shoes of the other party members at the enemy, inflicting massive damage. I didn't realize you've already played the game. That is exactly what happens. But thank God with the power of the PlayStation 5, those Frey Bentos are, are in the highest fidelity possible. And at 60 frames. The name is rather normal actually, TBH. Yeah, it is, it is rather normal. Clive is what he does with the name. Guys, you honestly, when you play it, you'll realize, oh yeah, I want to be a Clive too. MFS name is Clive, LMAO. I love how much people are dining out and how like normal Clive is as a name, but I've massively normalized it and I love it. I love his name. I might name my firstborn son Clive. Can't wait to see how a Moogle will look in the series. It doesn't look like this, but actually you can see it already on the gameplay. This is one from Final Fantasy XIV, but this is something that uh, a fan called Taylor gave me and it was the first ever gift I got given. So I just want to say thank you, Taylor, for giving it to me. I keep Mog safe. When they told me that Moogles were going to be in this game, I got very, very, very excited. The Moogle in this game is called Nectar, which I just thought was an excellent, an excellent name. So yeah, love Moogles. You had me at Clive's dog. Torgle is best boy. We all know this. When we were recording a lot of the scenes with Torgle, my own dog, Milton, who's a tiny Yorkshire Terrier, and completely different from Torgle was in the booth. I got to kind of imagine like I was saying my lines to Torgle to my actual dog, Milton. So they're very truthful lines. I know people are really worried about whether Torgle survives or not, so I won't ruin that for you. Clive is giving me all the Squall energy. That's great, because Squall was my first ever protagonist that I played with. He's got a bit of that brooding, hasn't he? He's got a bit of that like, don't talk to me. But I do think though, you know, I love Clive, but Squall is the best looking guy here. Can we finally date Shiva now? Gosh, I can't possibly say that you're gonna have to play the game. Every character is a pretty boy, even Hodor. <laughs> you and I agree on this. I would sometimes just see the characters in real life and like everyone is just so unbelievably beautiful. You've got fictional boyfriends and girlfriends for life in this, but also they're very deep characters, so bear that in mind as well. Can't wait for the moment when Clive uh, from Final Fantasy says, it's icon time. I don't think he does say that in the game, but I can say that for you now. It's icon time. How are you going to create this incredible, out there and fantastical world and then call your protagonist Clive? Guys, we just did it. I love the theme here, is that everyone doesn't like the name Clive, but I just, I just say, bear with me, bear with me. I promise you, I will make you love the name Clive. <sighs> Might as well just called him Keith. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame actually that you can't uh, rename him because I imagine a lot of people would have done me like Norman and Keith, like old traditional names. Yeah, you can call him Keith if you want. Fun fact, in my audition, his uh, code name is Clint Richmond. So make of that what you will. Rise, you crownless king. A reckoning is upon you, a war of the icons. That was a hard line. It was a hard line. I'd just been playing Elden Ring at the time. I saw a lot of people go, rise tarnished, which I thought was very funny. 
But um, yeah, I love that line. And the delivery of that line is so good. In fact, that entire Ambition trailer, fantastic performance. Thank you guys for your comments. I sensed a theme and the theme was, what kind of name's Clive? Clive is an incredible character. I've loved playing him. I can't wait for you to play him and for you to name all of your children Clive. If you like that, why not check out the actress for Princess Zelda in Tears of the Kingdom responding to your iGen comments, or the actor who plays Leon Kennedy in the Resident Evil 4 remake. はい、ファイナルファンタジー16ディレクターを務めています高井と言います。よろしくお願いします。はい、えー、同じくファイナルファンタジー16、えー、コンバットディレクターを担当しております鈴木亮太ですよろしくお願いしますアラタニーユーゲームプラスをこう選択していただけるとこのように最初とは違ってアラタニー三つ目のモードが出現していると思うんですけどこれ、えー、ファイナルファンタジーチャレンジというモードがアラタニー選択できるようになりこれはもう今まで1周目のデータを引き継いでさらに難易度の高い新たな挑戦をまあ皆さんにしていただけるモードになっておりますこちらは、えー、我々が大森林と呼んでいるステージになるんですけどアクションフォーカスストーリーフォーカスで割と序盤に訪れるステージになりますねあの1周目の敵配置になっているのでこのような小さなモンスターですねファイナルファンタジーチャレンジの大きい特徴ではセットされている敵のレベル帯がまあ大きく違うっていうのとあと1周目で登場しなかった敵が新たに2周目で登場しますのでまあ1周目とは違ったバトル体験が楽しめるという内容になっています大森林のこの特徴的なところでいうとまあ1周目このステージでいうとワイバーンがまあ中ボスとして登場してはいたんですがまあ、ファイナルファンタジーチャレンジだと,えとそのワイバンの代わりにまあキマイラが登場するっていうところでまあそのキマイラとワイバンではあのバトルの中での,その攻略の繊維だったりとかは大きく違いますのでステージ通してのえと難度の起伏とかも大きく変わっているのでえそういう意味でも新しい体験ができると思っていますキマイラの特徴としては炎を吐くであったりとかえと物理攻撃だけじゃなくまあ蛇のところからの魔法であったりとかまああの氷属性さまざまな属性での、えー、と魔法攻撃を放ちつつ、まあ、効果力な物理攻撃といった感じでの、えー、と物理と魔法をかあの組み合わせた中型のモンスターとなりますファイナルファンタジーチャレンジではこのような強敵が新たに登場することになるんですけど、まあ、この状態でのクライブっていうのは今まで、えー、皆さんが培ってきた全てのアビリティを駆使して戦えるっていう状態になってますので。あ,のある程度強力なモンスターでももう自分が思い描いてきたビルドの組み合わせでもうがっつり戦えるようになってます1周目のアクションフォーカスストーリーフォーカスでは、えー、とこのシーンではまだフェニックスしか、まあ、持っていないシーンになります、まあ、2, 周目だ2周目のファイナルファンタジーチャレンジで、えー、と1周目で習得した召喚獣の力を最大限使って、まあ、新たにバトルが行えるという状態になりますこちらは、えー、とあるクリスタルのある神殿にクライブが訪れることになっている場所なんですけどまず1周目でクライブを待ち構えている敵兵士たちですね大きな斧を持った巨大な兵士がいますけど、まあ、これらと戦っている1周目のアクションフォーカスモードということになります。ファイナルファンタジーチャレンジではその敵が、えーまあ、ファイナルファンタジーおなじみの、えー、テス巨人に変わってますでテス巨人の戦闘難易度敵の強さっていうのも大きい斧を持った兵士に比べて、えっと、全然強いので、まあ、歯応えのあるバトルがここで新たに楽しめるようになってます、えー、テス巨人っていうモンスターなんですけど、まあ、これは自分としては FF を代表するモンスターの一つかなと思っているんですけどもう遡れば FF2 あたりから出ているモンスターなのでドット絵の鉄巨人っていうのが存在しますねで、まあ、その上でこれ
天野さんのデザインっていう元デザインっていうものが存在しますんでまああの16でも出すにふさわしいシリーズを代表するモンスターかなと思ってチョイスしておりますまあ今回のこの16の中ではまあある種魔法の力を原動力に動くというような設定で使わせていただいてます、えー、とこの鉄巨人なんですが、えー、と魔法の力で動くっていう設定とともに、えー、と戦闘の中でも、えー、と主に魔法を使った、えー、と攻撃っていうのを行いつつも、えー、とこの巨大な体を生かした物理攻撃、巨大な剣を生かした、えー、と剣撃アクション等で、えー、と近接と遠隔の両方で、えー、と戦うことができる、えー、と大型ボス、まあ、機動力が高いというところが、えー、と大きな特徴となっています。はい、えー、とさまざまな召喚獣を駆使してなんとかこの難敵を無事倒すことができましたね、まあ、各ステージこのようなサプライズ「FF ファイナルファンタジーチャレンジ」では随時用意してますんで皆さんも楽しみにこのバトルをチャレンジしていただければと思いますご期待くださいうわ
Welcome back to IGN Summer of Gaming. My name is Nicholas Lamone, and I think that the legacy of the crystals has shaped our history for long enough. It is my privilege to welcome two people who I think feel the same. Uh, to watch and discuss all things Final Fantasy 16 with me is director Hiroshi Takai and producer Naoki Yoshida. Welcome. Uh, so I I don't have too much time today, so just to walk you through everything we're going to do, the game is available right now, but we're going to give you a kind of spark notes version of some of the cool features that are available in the game. So using the Arete Stone that's available in your hideaway, we're going to jump around several different points in the game doing our best to be very sensitive about spoilers. So up first, we're going to play through the Great Wood, which if I'm not mistaken, uh, takes place just immediately after where the brand new demo ends. So this is going to be the first thing we're going to have cutscene skip on. So if you're extra sensitive to it, uh, please, there's no worry. We're just going to watch some hopefully good gameplay. <laughs> now this is actually I'm going to I'm going to pull the a peek behind the curtain a little bit. This is the second time I've actually played through arcade mode on this particular level, just because I want to make sure I'm doing my best to look good in front of my guests. Mm -hmm. And I played through for the first time with only two of my icon abilities, but because of my progress in the game thus far, I've actually managed to unlock a third. So I'm going to be doing that uh, right now, actually. Right now I am using Ifrit, uh, but I can also cycle between Garuda, Garuda's wind abilities, as well as Ramu's uh, electric abilities. So I gotta know, uh, the, the game is kind of marketing itself as the legacy of our crystals has uh, shaped the, the history, our history for long enough. Um, that that how that that feels very evocative of like bringing Final Fantasy back to this its roots. So how does Final Fantasy 16 bring the series back to its roots? We still have a way to go. まあ、今回、その、まあ、シクスティーンを開発、スタートするにあたって、まあ、僕はプロデューサー、高井さんがディレクターっていう形で、まあ、前広が脚本をやるって、まあ、3人でスタートさせたんですけど、まあ、その時に、あの、僕から、召喚獣とクリスタルは、もう、絶対に物語の中心に添えてくれと。それをすることによって、ちゃんとファイナルファンタジーというものを感じられるようになるから、あえてそこを、こうその2つを中心にしてほしいっていうオーダーをしたところから始まってます。So when we started working on the development of 16,、uh, we started with a, a small group, just three core members: myself as producer, Takai-san as director, and Maihiro-san was working on the script. And when we had this sort of small group came together and we were thinking about what to do for Final Fantasy 16, I asked them to put the summons and the crystals. Right at the very core of everything, because if we had those core elements, that would ensure it would be a final fantasy. So it was very intentional that we really focused in on these. And at the same time, even though this game seems to embrace its series roots, that line, it, the, the legacy of the crystals has shaped our history for long enough, almost seems to imply a rejection of the original kind of final fantasy motifs, such as crystals. Um, the magical races and whatnot. So it, it also seems to kind of subvert a lot of fan expectations in that regard.、Uh, was that intentional? いやーそうねちょっと天の弱なんですよね僕ら<笑>その FF といえばクリスタルってまあ誰もが言ってくれるんですけどなんか近年のちょっと FF のクリスタルの扱いがちょっとなんかと,とりあえずクリスタルは出てきますみたいな雰囲気だったのが正直あまり自分としてはちょっと残念だった
、ただクリスタルを巡る物語っていうのはこれまでの過去作特にあのスーパーファミコンスーパーファミコンの時代すごく徹底して描かれてるので、うんうんうん、中心には添えるリスペクトはするけど今回はそのクリスタルを巡る物語が単に加護を与えられてるっていうだけのものではないっていうのをこう表現したかったでこれは実は召喚獣も同じでさもなその召喚者がいて魔法のように呼ばれたらすごい演出が入ってすごいダメージが出てっていうそういうものではなくあくまで世界とか物語の中心にある存在であるっていうふうにだから同じエレメントなんだけどそのアプローチとかリスペクトの仕方を全く変えるっていうのが今回。So, yeah, that's right. I mean, it's just who we are. We can't necessarily you know, play these things straight, perhaps.、Um, obviously, crystals are a really core element to Final Fantasy that everyone would say, oh, you know, Final Fantasy, that's crystals. But looking at the way that crystals have been incorporated into some recent Final Fantasies, sometimes it just seems like they're, you know, hey, here's a crystal, it's Final Fantasy, there you go.、Um, Which I always felt was you know, a bit of a shame. So, really wanted to like, go back to the crystals as being a key element.、Um, but looking at some of the past Final Fantasies, for example, those on the Nairs or the Snares, they've really gone into and really had these stories about the crystals front and center. So, we didn't just want to do a story that was about、um, the protection of the crystals, we wanted to have something that was a, a little bit different. Um, and the same is true of the summons, which are the icons in Final Fantasy XVI. You know, in previous games, you have a summoner, they call up the summon, they come up with a big animation and some great magic, do some damage, and then go away again. We didn't want to do that, we wanted to have them right at the core of the world and the story. So, even though we've got these consistent elements, I'd say that our approach to them has been different, and that's one of the underlying themes. No, and I, I really appreciate the almost Revisionist style approach at the traditional Final Fantasy game because it's looking for something more meaningful to say, and I think that really goes hand in hand with the story that we see with Clive,、uh, Clive Rossfield. こう今までの FF を脱却して変えていこうそして主人公像も新たなっていうところをあまり実は意識して作ってはいないんですよね正直なところ。We're going to create a Final Fantasy that's completely unlike previous Final Fantasies, or we're going to have a Final Fantasy protagonist who's really different to all of the Final Fantasy main characters who've come before. We didn't really think about it like that. So, 先ほどの吉田の話にちょっとつながるんですけど、やっぱりこうあえて変えようというよりは、クリスタルをちゃんと世界の中央に据えて、しっかりとしたお話を。加工そ,その上でアプローチをやっぱりちょっと変えてみようっていうところが大きいだけであって我々としてはその点に実は「ファイナルファンタジーらしさ」ってものはちゃんと残してるつもりで制作自体はしてますし主人公のクライブに関してもまあ背負ってるものがちょっと今までの主人公とかと比べるとまあ渋いというかダークというかっていうようなところがあるかもしれないですけどそこはあえて、えー、と今までのシリーズとちょっと。と違った雰囲気を与えるようなところにはなっているのかもしれないです。So you know, as Yoshida さん just mentioned, what we were really looking at was having something that placed the crystals right in the center of this world, and then telling a really fleshed out, proper story surrounding that. So it wasn't that we intentionally took a completely different approach. We just sort of tweaked it slightly and had a different way that we were looking at things. Amongst that, though, I still do think that we've managed to preserve this kind of Final Fantasy spirit or Final Fantasy DNA within it. For Clive as well,、um, you know, he may be carrying some burdens and have some things that he's dealing with that are a little bit more perhaps dark、um, or, or a little bit more serious or severe in some senses than.、Um, Other protagonists, but we didn't intentionally go out of our, our way to sort of create someone completely different. It was just due to the way we were approaching the game as a whole. 
全然関係ないけどうまいですね、うん、<笑>あのアクションのプレーが。あんまりなんかこうでなくてはならないとか、前作がこうだったからこうしてやれとか、あまり実は考えてないです、毎作。This might come as a bit of a surprise, but we don't really sit here as developers and think this is what Final Fantasy has to be. It was like this in the previous games, so we have to do it like that. We, we just don't really think about that kind of thing as much. 例えばその16に関しても、この現代の中で、本当多くのエンターテインメント作品があって、スクリプトの素晴らしい作品というのはゲームに限らずたくさんあるでしかもこれだけのグラフィックスクオリティで物語を作らなきゃいけないっていう風になった時にやっぱりこう多数のキャラクターをものすごいボリュームで描ききるっていうのは結構不可能に近いと思っていてだからこそ今回はクライブ主人公のクライブ・ローズ・フィールドっていう男の。まあ、人生そのものっていうのにフォーカスを当てて描ききるそれによって物語を深くあの体験してもらってかつそのクオリティとしてもね満足のいくところをそのしっかり描くっていうことにしたからこそのこういう形になってるのでなんかそこにね過去作とかは実はあんまり考えてはいないんです。These days, there's so much entertainment out there at people's fingertips that have fantastic stories, a great script, not just games, all kinds of things. And then, you know, we have to create something that really lives up to this kind of graphical quality. And so, when you start thinking about the quality that's required on all these different fronts, and then you start thinking about, well, we need to have loads of different characters in the cast, we need to have a real great volume of content to be able to depict all of those stories in a lot of detail. It's, Nearly an impossible task when you get down to it. So, what we've done instead is we've really focused in on our protagonist of Clive Rosfield, on his life. And by focusing in on that and really sort of getting that story across, we've been able to create something with a lot of depth、um, that I really hope people will enjoy and find compelling. And I think as well it means that we've been able to deliver something of this quality because we've decided to focus in, focus in on it and approach it that way. And that's why we've decided to you know, approach it in this way because we wanted to make sure that it would be something that people would enjoy. So, from that perspective, we didn't really consider you know, previous Final Fantasy installments that much when coming up with everything. But in that same vein, it also feels like Final Fantasy, as a longtime fan, Final Fantasy is a series that is iterated on itself in a way that it is not tearing down that which came before, but building on it. And, Kind of evolving naturally like, a, like its own organism. And I really feel like you've captured that essence with Final Fantasy XVI.、Uh, I'm just curious personally why you thought uh, bringing, uh, uh, and I might be mistaken, named Ryota Suzuki,、mm-hmm. in from Devil May Cry to, to do this.、Uh, was there ever a concern that the game felt too much like Devil May Cry and not enough like Final Fantasy? そうしてるとほとんどないですね。まあ、今こう体験あ今こうプレイしていただいてこう我々実は作ってる時にそこまでデビルメイクライっぽいと思っていなくて正直なところこうプレイした皆さんがあ似てるかもねって言われてあそっかって思ってるぐらいなんですよね。You know, people are, are playing the game now, they've got it in their hands,、um, and we're hearing lots of this kind of feedback. But when we were developing it, we didn't really think, oh, this feels a bit like Devil May Cry. So we didn't have those questions. It's, you know, only now we've sort of seen that feedback of people saying, oh, it kind of feels similar to Devil May Cry. We're like, oh,、um, does it? Oh, sure. But, you know, Clive, 
戦っている時にかっこよく見えてほしいとかこう何かこうフィニッシュが決まった瞬間にやはりそこもこうクライブが決まるみたいなところは意識しては作っていてそういうところを注力すればするほど、まあ、デビルメイクライっていうゲームもすごいアクションとしてかっこいいゲームなのでそういう点では似通ってくるのかもしれないしあと、まあ、言ってもこう鈴木亮太っていう人間が手を入れているのでそこは彼の癖とか彼の哲学とかそういうものが出てきて、まあ、デビルメイクライと今回の FF16 のクライブの中にこう通じるものが溢れ出てしまっているってことは十分あると思います。So, you know. At the end of the day, as well, we do want Clive to look cool when he's fighting. You know, when he gets out of a sticky situation, we want him to finish off with a cool move and just do something that looks great.、Uh, and that was obviously something that we were very intentional about in our approach. I think the same can be said of Devil May Cry as well. That's an action game that really looks cool.、Um, so perhaps, you know, there is that similarity there because the more you focus on making something look cool, perhaps the more similar path you're going to go down. And obviously, of course, as you mentioned, we, br- we brought in Ryota Suzuki. So he will have his own style, his own quirks, and his own design philosophy. So, due to that as well, I do think that there will be some sort of similarities between Devil May Cry and Clive in Final Fantasy XVI that do sort of leak through, shall we? なんかやりすぎたって感じたところも実はなくってこれはやっぱりディレクターの高井さんから亮太君に対してもう絶対に今回今作召喚獣が中心にあるからその召喚獣っていうものをしっかり感じられるそれを生かしたコンバットを作ってほしいっていうオーダーをしたものに対して亮太君がやっぱり忠実にそれに応えよう。でやっぱりデビルメイクライのファンじゃなくて、ファイナルファンタジーのファンに受け入れてもらうためのリアルタイムアクションとしてのバトルを作ったっていうふうに本人も言ってたので、そこのこだわりがやっぱりこう、なんだろう、無茶をというか無謀を多分自分でしなかったんだと思いますよ。だから僕らからやりすぎだからもうこれやめてくれみたいなのは一回もなかったです。And that's, I think, partly because Takai san's director said to、um, Ryota san, he said, Look, the summons, the icons are right at the core of this experience. So please make use of them, use them to their full capability when, you know, when designing the combat system. And he really took that on board, like, absolutely、mm. faithfully, in, in、um, you know, full sincereness. And as well,、um, He designed the combat system for fans of Final Fantasy, not for Devil May Cry fans. And that was something that he took really seriously. So he never sort of went too far and thought, I'm going to throw everything in here, I'm going to do some really crazy stuff. He always kept the experience for the Final Fantasy fans、um, at the front and center. Well, as、uh, somebody who's had a lot of time with the game, I can say that I think uh, uh, Ryota san and your entire combat team. Absolutely nailed it in terms of game feel and also utilizing those icons as, for lack of a better way of putting it, Clive's weapon set. And it just feels like a, such a, a natural evolution of a action combat system. And also, he looks really cool doing it the entire time.、Um, if you could take a look at my、uh, display here, this is the end, this is kind of like the end card for the arcade mode. When you're actually going through the normal game, you're not ranked in the same way. The game allows you to take any progress that you've made in the game and revisit various combat scenarios because, as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna wanna do that because it's fun and you're only gonna get more toys to play with. So, I fortunately managed to not make an absolute fool of myself. I think I managed to pull off an S rank. So, right now, what we're gonna do is We're actually going to、um, play through the Garuda boss fight where、uh, Clive managed to find a special power within himself to fight back against a gargantuan enemy,、uh, an icon known as Garuda, a Final Fantasy mainstay.、Uh, this is the part of the game that really clinched it for me to showcase, like, We're in it, baby. This is incredible. This is exactly what we want from Final Fantasy. I've read numerous rev-、um, interviews that you've given,、uh, Yoshida san, where you talked about. What makes Final Fantasy above all Final Fantasy is that it has the best story, it has the best graphics, and it has the best music. And I think that this battle really exemplifies that from beginning to end. And it is the thing that tells everybody strap in, we're in for a good ride. Where is he? Where is the dominant? 
Uh, but speaking of all the various summons and icons, so Final Fantasy 16 is a game built around summons. That is in integral to its story as much as the Great Mother Crystals are. So with all the various icons that are in the game, how did you choose what to include and what not to include? There's so many cool summons throughout the history of Final Fantasy. So was it difficult to limit yourself? えっと、まず召喚獣、今回のゲームの中で使われてる召喚獣の選定なんですけど、まあ、基本的にはえっと、ゲームのシナリオ、脚本を担当したマイヒロのストーリーを中、ストーリーからこう当然ゲーム内に
いつだなーっていうそれは実はないですねうん。個人的にはねこの世界観でアレキサンダーがいてどっかの首都そのものがそのうんこう王によってこう、うん、呼ばれて呼ばれてそのみたいなのは、うんまあうん、面白そうではあるなと思うんだけど<笑>すでに経験しているとかね時間扱っちゃうとさ<笑>うんうん、うん、無敵すぎるもんね、うん、なんか機会があったらねそういうなんかはちゃめちゃなのも面白いんだろうなと思うんですけどね。Having an icon that could use and manipulate time would just be too overpowered, way too invincible.、Um, but yeah, I think it'd be fun to do something really crazy like that. So, I think it's a good idea. 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 Chatting about it from that sort of level. This was way before the story and the, the whole scenario was, was locked in. But I remember that when、um, My Hero San and I were sort of going through looking at all the different summons from Final Fantasy III onwards, we, we did kind of have this chat and say, Oh, wouldn't it be nice if we could put one in for, to represent each of the past Final Fantasies? So have 15 of them in. But pretty quickly we were like, Oh, yeah, no, that would just be impossible. So that's that, after one and a half years. That would have taken another five years, maybe? その時はでもアレキサンダー入ってただろうね。確かに。で、フィルダンだ、ウィルガラ・アレクサンダーだ、メビ。Well, regardless, I think you really nailed the, the perfect number for this game, but that said, Alexander feels like a perfect, perfect icon for a s a m b r a q u a そうね、雰囲気的にはそうなんですよね、面白いと思うんだよな。いや、I think it, Alexander would have really been a perfect fit for that kind of、um, atmosphere and the vibe there. What do you mean again? そう、ザンブレクはね、まさにイメージ通りだったり。うんうん、ザンブレクは本当に、私が考えていたことです。Good call. And now we're in the middle of the icon fight here, and as you can say, this was the, the thing that first drew me to Final Fantasy XVI as a The first biggest differentiator from the rest of the series is kaiju battles.、Uh, so I gotta know, I'm a huge kaiju fan. Was there any inspiration from any kaiju film, any tokusatsu, anything like that? Or was it just pure imagination? いやなんかもう,そう僕らはやっぱゴジラだったりエヴァンゲリオンだったり、まあ、近年だとね「あのー、進撃の巨人」だったり「仮面ライダー」も「ウルトラマンも」も、うんまあ、僕らゲーマーでもありこうアニメ漫画特撮が大好きなので,で、ね、<笑>体がほぼそれで構成されてるんですよ。<笑>なのでこう作っていくと
好きだから出ちゃうんですよね。うん、so, you know, we have all kinds of inspiration to draw on, whether that's Godzilla, Evangelion, more recently, you know, Attack on Titan, things like Kamen Rider, Ultraman. Obviously, we're gamers. But we also love anime, manga, tokusatsu. I'd say it sort of makes up our DNA. It's who we are. And so, even if we're not intentionally approaching it to create something like that, it's just going to come out. It's just who we are. But yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. But right now, we are going to get into a hunt. This is a very early on hunt that's in the game.、Uh, so, those worried at home that I'm going to spoil anything big, you don't have to worry too bad. This is Super duper early on, and it's only a B grade level hunt. Alrighty, so here, is, here he is. Everyone wanted to know are there Moogles in the game? And yes, confirmed, there is a Moogle, and his name is Nectar, and I love him.、Uh, but this is his hunt board, and as you can see, these are the hunts I've managed to do so far. And at the、uh, pre launch celebration,、uh, Ryota san actually showed off an S tier、uh, <laughs> hunt. I will not be doing that today. I'm going to just take on a measly B grade, but hopefully,、yeah. hopefully he doesn't make me、uh, go running. But I'm going to take on Secret. Yeah, but I'm going to take on Secret. Yeah, but I'm going to take on Secret. So, you know, looking at the skills you've got set up, it seems like you're going all out, big skills all the way. It's really interesting looking at people's abilities. It's really interesting looking at people play because you know everyone just sets up their abilities in a completely different build, and it's really fascinating to see. Well, I want absolutely no chance of failure, so I want to make sure I'm set up in the best way possible. <laughs> One thing as I go to explore, and this is we're going to see a little bit of the kind of、um, overworld that we have here. We're going to make our way through Martha's Rest, which you visit early on in the game. Secret、um, of、ah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And、uh, Martha's Rest, you visit earlier on in the game. But as you kind of walk, as I've walked through Valisthea, I can't help but notice the similarities and differences to、uh, Evilis,、uh, whether it be Final Fantasy Tactics or、um, Final Fantasy XII. And I just got to know how did you, was it difficult to make Valisthea stand out as its own unique place? Or was there ever this kind of comfort where you wanted to return to a previous Final Fantasy's world? Or did, were you dead set on a very clear vision? Of、uh, Valestia. いや独立した世界で描いてるんですけど、うん、あの<笑>これもまたですねあの、まあ、アートディレクターの皆川さんがそもそもずっと長らくね松野さんと一緒にこうイバリスの世界をね作った人から一人でもあるし舞広もねあの松,野松野さんの一番弟子だしね<笑>そう考えると、まあ、これもまたね好きなんですよやっぱこの手の世界観が、まあ、だから似ちゃう出ちゃうみたいな。I mean, again, we've, we've created a unique... World here, that's what we're, we're going for. But the art director, Minagawa san, he's worked with Matsuno san on、um, games in the Ivalis world for a very, very long time. And、um, Maihiro san as well, he is, I would say, the greatest apprentice perhaps of、uh, Matsuno san as well. So it's just the, the people making it, and at the end of the day as well, that's what we love. We love that kind of world and that kind of style. So Even if it's not intentional, it's just going to come out, I think. That feel is going to、um, find its way into our work. So, first of all, I'm going to start with the Ivalis world. 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 各シリーズにかかったスタッフがいるのでそういう人たちやっぱ自分の DNA がどんどん仕事に出てきてどこかしら醸し出す雰囲気っていうものがあのプレイしている皆さんに伝わってしまうと思うんですけどそこでイバリースみたいなのを感じてしまうとしたらきっと開発者の DNA をもう感じてもらってるんだと思います。Let's create Valisthea, this 
wonderful world from scratch, from zero. But having said that, you know, a lot of the key and core development uh, team, you know, they've all worked on past Final Fantasy games and that becomes part of their DNA. They bring their own touch and style to everything that they work on. And that sort of creates the atmosphere of the game. So if players, you know, feel that this is similar to uh, Ivalis, then they're probably feeling the unique touch and taste of the development team. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to get dragged online. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not going to be good, but hopefully I can redeem myself with the short time we have left. But uh, nope, that makes 100% sense. Uh, one of the things that also stood out to me as I made my way through the story is um, and, and it's very few Final Fantasy games that actually tackle this sort of material, but it is the overt um, kind of political intrigue that is present throughout the game. And it's also the um, kind of the, the, the push and pull pressure of uh, theology within the politics of the world. So was that something you actively set out to do with uh, My Hero-san? Or is that just something that because you are dealing with adult themes, you are dealing with, you know, uh, political power and pressure. Uh, that's just a natural tie-in to Final Fantasy, the religious uh, side of aspect of the crystals. これはもう正直なところ、14も、その、かなり政治的要素多いので、描いていこうっていうことを決めていたので、結果としてあの必要だから出てきたって感じですね。これも。I mean, honestly speaking, I feel like you know you could say that Final Fantasy XIV includes a lot of political um, elements in its story as well. So for XVI, when we came to thinking about and decided to include the icons, um, who are these fantastic, powerful beings? with the power, say, of a nuclear weapon. And then we have the mother crystals, which provide energy in a way you know, similar to oil fields, perhaps. Then when we decide to, you know, and we've intentionally put those elements in and we're looking at telling a story that's grounded in reality, then these kinds of political and other themes just crop up naturally when thinking about their place in the world. So I would say these themes are in there because they're necessary for the story. And that's also one of the things that stood out to me because leading up to Final Fantasy 16, people always ask, were you inspired by Game of Thrones? Like, it, it, as you mentioned in the pre-launch celebration, Game of Thrones does not own dark fantasy mature themes and things like that. But I am curious because it was such a zeitgeist worldwide, what lessons did you learn from maybe how Game of Thrones didn't quite the stick the landing, whereas it seems you have a very clear vision from beginning to end with something like Final Fantasy 16. ちなみに僕ゲームオブスローンズ、ま、原作も含めて大ファンだからちょっとフォローしておきたいんですけど。僕ゲームオブスローンズのドラマ版のラスト<笑> 
その終わり方っていう意味ではちゃんとしてるんだとは思うんですよただちょっと急いだなっていう印象があって本当は12シーズンかけて描くべきものが結構5話ぐらいにギュッてなっちゃったところが多分みんなフラストレーションなんでこんなに急にこう,こうなっちゃうのみたいなところだと思ってるんでだから僕はそのおわ終わりのも映画物語性っていう部分はちゃんとしてるんだろうな、うん、本来はまあもうね原作も追い越しちゃったからねそ,うなんないかだからそこはね残念だったとは思うんですけどなんだろうオチが悪かったとは実はあんまり思ってないですまず。<笑> First of all,、um, I want to set the record straight a little bit here because I am a, a fan of Game of Thrones, including of the you know, original novels. And in terms of the ending, I don't think it was bad. I think it was a good ending, but I think it was rushed. They took、mm. what could have been shown in like one or two seasons and they crowned it into five episodes. And I think that's why people are so frustrated because it just doesn't feel, you know, it doesn't have that coherence. In terms of the story and the sort of narrative itself, I don't, you know, I don't think it's bad.、Um, it just feels like there's not enough time for it. I suppose that's partly, you know, they'd, they'd overtaken the、uh, original novels,、mm. so, you know, maybe that's got something to do with it. And I think it's, it's a real shame.、Um, but yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't call it a bad ending. And this is actually the last one that Final Fantasy XV has been in the same way that it's been in the same way. 本当にたくさんの人に楽しんでもらえたし今でもあの世界、あのー、ゲームが大好きだって言ってくださる人たちもたくさんいるんですけどやっぱストーリーに関しては最後急にこういきなり終わってしまったっていう感じがすごく言われていたので僕らも事実フィードバックとしてなので今回「16に関してはもうしっかり全てを一つの物語として描ききるそれがえっ、ー、と要は。こうコストがなくなったとかスケジュールがないとか言ってこうギュッとカットしたりをしないとにかく一番最初に脚本を書きこの物語を完成させることが「ファイナルファンタジー16」が完成することだっていうふうにゴールを決めてここまでやってきたので、うんまあ、そこは何だろうねそのこ,こだわってきて自分たちで何度も遊んでみてこれだったら大丈夫ってなったから今回発売しているので物語の最後に関しては。So, I think, to be honest, the same thing could be said about Final Fantasy XV. There were lots of people who were really, really looking forward to Final Fantasy XV, and there were loads of people around the world who loved the game a lot. But we did get a lot of feedback that the ending just felt really sudden.、Um, and So, what we really wanted to do with 16 was above all tell a complete story, tell you know, a really good and solid story there. We didn't want to get to a point where we're like, oh no, we've run out of budget, we've run out of, <laughs> you know, we're, we're tight on schedule, we need to get this done. We wanted to make sure that we had a story and that that story was told completely.、Um, that was really one of our goals with 16. And Because we have played it ourselves many, many times, we've really focused in on this goal and said, yes, it's ready. We think this is in a state where we've achieved that goal. It's because we've done that that we've been able to release the game. And so, yeah, I would say we have quite a bit of confidence in the ending. But, 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 まあ、エンディングを見た時のプレイヤーの皆さんの感想っていうのはもうそれぞれだと思うんですけど、うん、我々としてはもう今回「クライブの物語」っていうのはきっちり描ききることをできたと思っているので本当にそこまで見届けてほしいなと思っています。And you know, I'm sure that people will have lots of different thoughts and opinions, feedback on the, the end of the game when they reach it or the end of the story when they reach it. But as far as we're concerned, we really feel that we've managed to tell Clive's story Completely, you know, do it justice, and, and so we're really happy with that. That's also one of the things, and I, I just finished the hunt here.、Mm-hmm. Uh, we are going to, you know, I, I don't know what happened previously. I wasn't paying attention.、Uh, my eyes were closed. I don't know, but we finished the hunt. We got our reward. So,、uh, very fun fight. As you can see, that was just a taste of the hunts that we saw there. But 
just to backtrack a little before we go to our uh, Twitter questions, um, just to kind of touch on Clive's story from beginning to end. I mean, I think previously in other Final Fantasies, we've seen our protagonists through various stages of our life. And I know that My Hero-san was inspired by uh, Dragon Quest V with the, mm. the saga of the main characters, uh, the story being told over the course of a character's life from childhood to adulthood to an old man and eventually mm. his children taking over. Now, is that something that rang true to you from My Hero-san? Or do you just let him have fun because he's, our, he's the uh, creative director? Yeah, so much so マイヒロそのインタビューで指摘されて初めて気がついたって言っていて当然「5は名作なのでマイヒロ自身もプレイはしていたけど意識したわけじゃなかったって答えてるはずなので,で僕らも全然意識してなくてで言われてみたら確かにそうだなって。Yeah, so actually, if I remember correctly, when、uh, マイヒロさん had that interview, they Pointed out that、uh, this is similar to Dragon Quest V, and that was when he first realized that that was the case.、Mm. I mean, Dragon Quest V is a fantastic game. He has, of course, played it, but he hadn't made that connection until it was pointed out to him. And it's the same for us as well, you know, like having heard that, we were like, oh, yeah, actually, that's a, you know, it's a, it's a good point, but that wasn't something we intentionally、um, approached there. これもう記憶が結構曖昧なんですけど、どんな物語にしていくかっていうことを話し合って。いる時にそのちょっと今回はジブナイルっぽさは落としてできるだけこうさ最終的にはまあ30代中盤からやや後半ぐらいの主人公の物語にしていきたいよねっていう話をまあやっぱり僕ら自身がその楽しめるというか主人公になっていけるような物語にしたかった。でもそういうキャラクターに没入感を持ってもらうためには。その主人公の少年時代だその青年時代みたいなのを知ってた方が感情移入できるはずだから3つの時代の物語にした方がいいんじゃないっていうのは結構最初にですね、うん、コンセプトとして打ち合わせしてる時に決まってるはず。So I'm not quite sure. I don't remember this too clearly, but I seem to remember that when we were talking about what kind of story we wanted to have for 16, we decided very early that we wanted to you know, make sure it didn't feel juvenile or, or quite, quite young, perhaps. So we said, you know, wouldn't it be good if we had a protagonist from his mid to late 30s?、Um, you know, We would like it to be a game that we can enjoy as well and the character we can relate to.、Um, but to get that immersion with a character, wouldn't it be best to say, show his youth, his teens, his 20s?、Mm-hmm. So I think that from quite an early concept stage, we had this discussion and we decided, well, why don't we depict this protagonist's life throughout three different stages of their life? So, in the first stage, I think that the first s それこそゲームオブスローンズじゃないけど、複数主人公の視点からもっと群像劇っぽいものみたいなものも一度検討はしてみたけど、まあ、それを作り切るのは無理だね。やっぱり一人の主人公に重点を置かないともうボリューム的に無理だろうみたいな話ももっと前にはあったぐらいですね。And, you know, even... Earlier than that, I remember that we did have discussions、um, about a narrative that really had a sort of ensemble cast, you know, not quite Game of Thrones, but with lots of different protagonists or, or a group of them. But very quickly, we sort of came to the realization just in terms of the amount of content that would be impossible.、Um, so it would be far better to sort of focus on really thoroughly telling the story of, of one protagonist. As someone who is now Aged into his 30s, I truly appreciate the representation.、Uh, but I think we are running out of time, so I just want to take one quick question from Twitter.、Uh, this is from Twin H Gaming, who asks What was the biggest challenge in making the game pre- compared to your previous works? So,、um, you know, Takai san, from Saga to now,、uh, what, what was that kind of a challenge that you faced with 16? Because I'm sure back, way back when you Face very different challenges. まずサガのようなものを作ってた時代と開発規模が雲泥の差なのでまずスタッフの量だけでも、まあ、倍じゃ効かないぐらい大きいのでもうちょっと比べられないぐらい差はありますね。First and foremost, I just want to say that the whole scale of development has changed so much from when I was working on things like Saga. Like, 
the amount of people involved in the project is more than double, I would definitely say. So it's just impossible to sort of compare on that kind of level. で、まあ、その話にもちょっとつながるんですけど新しいことも当然こう FF「ファイナルファンタジー」シリーズとしてチャレンジしていかなければならないっていうものもあってそれ,そ,それこそ今回は召喚獣対召喚獣っていうものを複数こう作っていかなければならないとか改めてアクションゲームっていうものにチャレンジするとかそして PS5 って新しいハードでゲームを作っていかなければならないとかいう。チャレンジをしなければいけない。で、そのチャレンジを達成するためには、ある程度大きな開発規模がないととてもできない。そんな中で開発規模が大きくなると、まあ当然関わるスタッフが大きく、多くなって、そのスタッフたちと同じ目標に向かってこう、意思疎通して開発を進めなければならないんだけれども、まあ全員が同じ、こう、ちゃんと物事を理解して、一歩一歩進めていくっていうところは、まあとても、難しかったですね、やっぱり。So, you know, one of the things that's really essential to Final Fantasy is always taking on something new and trying new challenges.、うん、so, for example, this time round, we have the icon versus icon battles with lots of different sort of, you know, approaches to that as well. We have the fact that we were taking on an action gameplay、uh, system and then also that we were developing for new hardware. The PS5. And so this just requires a much larger development scale. And then that means that you have a lot more staff. You're all working on this as a much bigger team. And to get that whole team moving together as one towards the same goal、uh, is the ideal, obviously.、Um, but making sure that everyone is on the same page, that everyone has a really clear understanding of each step and moving through that at the same time is incredibly difficult. 昔はね、本当人数が少なかったので、うん、容量もまあ少ないゲームしか作れなかったから、一人で何役もやってたんですよね。うんうん、あの、コンバット作ったやつがテキスト書いてたし。<笑>だから、何かあっても、話し合えばすぐ割と決まったし、うんうん、ここあん、いまいちだから、こう直そうぜ、みたいなの二人であっという間にできたりしたんだけど、今これ直そうぜって言ったら、え、なんか、I mean, you know, back in the day, you made games with just a far smaller team, which of course meant you made、um, games with smaller amounts of, of content, less volume. But,、um, you know, that meant that each individual team member would have a broader role.、Mm. Someone might be working on the combat, but also working on the text, things like that. But what that meant is that you could fix things relatively quickly just by having a quick chat. So, two of you would sit down and be like, oh, this isn't really that great. Should we change it? Yeah, let's change it. And then you could just work that out fairly quickly. Now, if you sit down and you go, like,、mm, I don't think this is great. Should we change it? And it's like, well, there's about 30 people we need to get involved in this discussion. And then it just, you know, it's a completely, completely different、uh, ball game. What do you think about it? I think it's a good thing to do. I think it's a good thing to do. I think it's a good thing to do. So, my job really is to go around apologizing to everyone when I need something fixed or need something changing. I'm very well of what that's like, but to some extent, much smaller scale.、Uh, but that is unfortunately all the time I have left. But if you want to check out Final Fantasy XVI, you can do that for yourself right now on PlayStation 5. Yoshida san, Takai san, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And for more on all things Final Fantasy XVI, stay tuned to IGN.